Test one, two. Okay, here we are. I'm back, guys. Sorry about that. Ah, uh, okay. Maria is still uh, installing the Flash uh, plugin. Just one minute, and we can start. No problem. Uh, Maria and Gioacchino are two Italian teachers. They are piloting uh, some experience, uh, educational experience in uh, Edmondo, which is uh, our educational grid in OpenSIM. And they are working with their students in the classroom, just uh, uh, from December and they are pioneers in OpenSIM. They started working on it in 2009, but there were some big issues in uh, working on OpenSIM in 2009. Sto dicendo a Fire che, uh, insomma, Gioacchino e Maria e altri state lavorando su OpenSIM da un bel po' di tempo e che soprattutto all'inizio insomma i problemi erano grossi. Yeah, there it was a little unstable. It's it's come a long way since then. Yes, yes. Maria non ci Maria is not uh, listening at the vo to the voice chat. So I I will translate for her and for the others uh, by text chat. Is everybody connected uh, to my um, Adobe Connect session yet? Uh, it seems uh, Maria is uh, missing. Um, I'm, I'm asking her if what's the problem. Okay, great. Well, we can wait. It's no problem. Oh, yes, yeah, see you have some, uh, you have uh, a TV camera. <laughs> That's great. Yes, because we are also uh, recording this uh, in, in a streaming video. So if this is not a problem for you, just... Uh, to be to no. to have some recording for other teachers or other people that want to, to have uh, to see this demonstration. Well, um, should I? Uh, she can't. Uh, Maria cannot hear my voice, right? Test one, Test one three, three. three. Test one, three, three. Test one, three, three.
però il problema è che poi dopo Maria non legge la chat Sì, no, dove usciamo da questa... Ok, let's start. I will translate in the text chat, uh, so please file uh, if, if you can speak. Sure, and if slowly. everyone could... Uh, turn off their microphones when they're not speaking, uh, then we can stop the uh, feedback. So when you want to speak, uh, press your mic button. And when you're done speaking, uh, please uh, uh, press uh, your mic button off. And that way, we can prevent all the feedback. OK, well, uh, Thanks, everybody, for coming today. It's really nice uh, to see you all here and to meet you. Um, this is my island, uh, English Village. And um, uh, Sal Hazar and uh, Andreas invited me to uh, give this presentation today. So I'm really happy to have you here. My name is Paul Prybish in the real world. Um, I'm from Canada, and I live in Tokyo presently where I'm working on uh, two projects, actually. Uh, one of the projects I'm working on is this Avatar Classroom. And um, the Avatar Classroom uh, actually comes from another project called the Sloodle Project um, at sloodle.org. Uh, it's a sloodle.org um, is an open source project that was started a number of years ago. And in 2009, I was brought on by the University of the, West of the West of Scotland as their lead researcher and developer. So I worked on that for a year, um, as well as um, there's other people that also worked on that project, including Edmund Edgar. And um, after, uh, in 2009 and 10 um, and 11, Edmund and I teamed up and we, we started working on uh, the Avatar Classroom. Actually, it was more so in 2010 and 11. And um, what we found was that the original Sloodle project, um, it had all the pieces, but it was quite uh, difficult to um, set up for teachers. Um, it would take several uh, months just to, to get things working properly. So the idea of the Avatar Classroom is to build a turnkey solution for teachers so that um, with a touch of a button, um, once you sign up on our website, what we automatically do is we create a Moodle website for you on our server. And then we, can, we connect that Moodle uh, website to uh, a bunch of tools inside Second Life. So you can have a 3D extension to your Moodle distance learning website. So right now, we're actually standing on uh, the Avatar Classroom. Uh, this is totally empty. But what I want to do today is I just want to quickly show you um, what the Avatar Classroom is. So I'm going to stop here. And before I continue, I just want to ask if there's any questions so far. Also, I want to say, uh, I want to congratulate you for uh, boldly going where a lot of teachers aren't going um, or are scared to and continue on this virtual uh, path. I think it's, uh, it's an exciting, um, uh, there's a lot of potentials that we can use virtual worlds for, so that's very cool that you guys are getting involved. And hopefully this Avatar Classroom will make things easier for you. So I have a question. Um, how familiar are you all with Moodle? Do you have Moodle installed? Well, 
Okay, good. It sounds like uh, G Geo Acolo has Moodle installed. That's great. Hello? Hello? Yes, uh, Okay, I they, guess I'll have oh, to keep my my Second Life microphone. I thought I could use my Adobe Connect microphone, but maybe not. Okay, great. So it looks like Geocolo is, is, um, is uh, who is Geocolo in the world, real world? What's your name? Uh, okay. <laughs> Geo, sorry. Geochino. I hope I'm saying that right. Okay, great. Okay, well, let me show you the beginning of the Avatar Classroom then. So, I'm going to zoom in here, um, and if you can see my screen in Adobe Connect, right now um, I'm looking at uh, the Rezzer. And this gray box over here, this is the Rezzer, and this is attached, this is your configuration box, your control panel to the Avatar Classroom. And um, if you click on it, uh, the camera will zoom in, and it will take you to the Avatar Classroom login screen. So on this screen, you simply have to log in. Type in your password, right? I have so many passwords. Once you log in, um, if you get to this screen, you press reset button, and it will show you um, your configuration of the Avatar Classroom. I'm just going to reset this. It takes a few seconds for the scripts to be reset, and when it's reset, what you'll see is you'll see a screen that looks like an iPhone. So here it will list uh, a site that has been automatically set up on my server. When you click on that site, um, what it'll do is it'll switch to the next screen, and this will show you the controller. Now this controller is actually a Moodle activity that you've added to your Moodle course. Um, and when you click on the, the Moodle controller, you'll be taken to the scene menu. And this menu um, will show you all the different scenes that you have. Now, scenes are used to, um, a scene is just a, a 3D virtual scene. So right now you can see that there's five different scenes here. I've got a floor one scene, floor two, floor three, floor four, and a puzzle games scene. Can you guys see that on Adobe Connect? OK, great. Um, in Second Life, um, unfortunately, if you fire. Uh, just a question. It's uh, normal that I don't watch it uh, inside my uh, inside Second Life, just only on uh, Adobe Connect. Yes. The the thing is, um, this screen inside Second Life is actually being displayed on shared media, so it's reading cookies from my computer. So therefore, if you look at this screen in Second Life, you're going to see something different than what I see. So, um, and that's a security feature. So, um, if you look at Adobe Connect, you'll be able to see exactly what I'm seeing. Okay, so I was explaining that um, there's five scenes, scene, um, you can see five scenes here. So I'm gonna click on the first scene, uh, scene uh, uh, floor one registration. And then the scene will list all the different Sloodle objects that are in the scene. So the first one, and we've, we've created different categories for these objects. The first category is the communications, assignments, and inventory category. The second category is quizzes and activities, registrations and enrollment, and other. And these are just the types of objects that we have. So in this scene, I've already got a choice object. I've got a registration and enroll booth object. I've got a front desk, a chalkboard, and a sign. I can also add other objects to the scene by just clicking on Add Object. And then I can choose which object I want to add to the scene. But I'm going to go back, and I'm just going to um, res the scene. 
So the top right, there's a button called Resolve. And when I click on that, what will happen is inside Second Life, you'll start to see all of these objects resing. Now, there seems to be uh, some sort of uh, texture issue uh, with my computer because this front desk is all white. But do you guys see the front desk? Is it white or is it a different color? Okay, good. It's not white. Okay, good. It's not supposed to be white. I guess um, I recently got a new computer, so for some reason on this computer it shows up as white. Okay, so just as a review, what I did was I, I was looking at my scene, and I pressed Resol, and all of these objects uh, moved into position. Now, if I press uh, Deresol, a little message will go to each one of these objects, and they'll all disappear. So. Let me tell you the advantage of this. Um, by using scenes, I'm going to create a new scene here. I'm going to create a new scene by pressing Add Scene, and I'm going to call it New Scene for Demo. And I'm going to press Create. A few seconds, you'll see that a new scene has been created. So I'm going to click on that. I'm going to add some objects. I'm going to add this time a vending machine. And when I click on it, um, the vending machine, it come, takes me to a configuration page, and I can select a whole bunch of different configuration op uh, options. I can select which distributor it's connected to in my Moodle course, and a few other options. Then I'm going to press Add. That distributor will then be added to my course. Now, when I press res, you'll see that the distributor will res inside Second Life. Now, here's the cool part. If I move this, um, if I move this vendor over here, I can put it in the position that I want it to be in. I can now go back to my configuration page and press freeze. And that will store the position of that vendor. So now when I press de-res, I want to res this later, I can press res, and it will move it to the position that I stored it. So this is a really cool feature of our reser, is it allows you to set up your scene and store the locations of your objects wherever you want them. And that way, you can set up multiple scenes. Um, and like, for example, maybe you could set up a hotel scene in one, for one class. You could set up a market scene for another class, and so on. And then just res and de-res the scenes as you need them. The neat thing is, is if I move this avatar classroom, I'm going to move it up and over. What will happen is all of the objects in the scene will move relative to the, the classroom. Um, and then some people just mentioned that um, they're only seeing a white screen on the reser. And as I mentioned, that's because this is a shared media screen, which means that this is an actual website. Um, this is an actual website uh, that's being displayed here. So if you're using Viewer 1, Viewer 1 doesn't support shared media. So you're only going to see a blank surface. 
So you need to have viewer 2 in order to uh, view this. Okay, I'm going to go back and res the other um, scenes so you get a better idea of what this can do. So I'm going to res the presentation scene. And in the presentation scene, I've got a prim drop, a web intercom, a presenter, password reset, assign, Twitter wall, presentation seating, and avatar classroom floors 2, 3, and 4. This is quite a few, quite a few objects, so let's res them now. So if you look around the avatar classroom, it's now become quite bigger. It's now four floors. And don't worry so much about what these objects do right now. I'm going to explain them in a minute. I'm just going to go through and res the other scenes. So I'm going to res th uh, scene, f uh, scene three, which is floor three, the meeting area. And then I'll also res uh, floor four. You'll also notice that um, that this res all button will sometimes be a bunch of lines. That's because um, it's just setting up and getting ready to communicate. I'm resing scene four four now. I'm going to uh, de-res my new scene that I resed earlier. Oops. And I'm going to re-res floor one registration scene. Okay, so now I've got the entire, um, I've got all the objects resed that uh, come with the avatar classroom uh, by default. So, and, and as I mentioned, if I move this classroom um, uh, to the right, uh, sorry, to the left a little bit, all of those objects are going to move as well with me. So, that's a really cool feature. Let's move these over here. Okay, so... Now that you've got an entire classroom, what can you do with it? Um, are you guys ready for a tour? Okay, great. So, the first floor that we're standing in, we, I call this the registration area. And this can be an area where your students first come to uh, register for the course or find some course information. So we've placed a desk over here. You might want to put some um, pictures on the wall here, uh, some posters about your, your classroom. Um, and over here we have a chalkboard. This chalkboard is also um, shared media. So if you look at Adobe Connect, you can see that there's some text written on it. If you want to change the text on it, you can just type in slash nine in your chat and type in type in a new message and press enter and that will communicate with the chalkboard and you'll see that message on the chalkboard. You can also change the message of the chalkboard by um, accessing the configuration of the chalkboard through the reser. So if I click on the registration scene and click on the chalkboard here, I can type in a new message. Uh, one moment delete this. If you can look at my Adobe Connect, you'll see what I'm doing. I'm just in the reser here and I'm typing in this is another new message. And then I press the update button and that message will go to the chalkboard. And you can see it's changed to this is another new message. So you can use this chalkboard to put um, information to your students, maybe a weekly message to your class, maybe some new words that you're teaching you could put on this on this chalkboard. That's the function of the chalkboard. Now follow me. Let's go to the next floor, floor two. This is the presentation area.
Now in the presentation area, we've got a number of different SLUTL objects. On the, in the middle of the floor here, we've got the SLUTL web intercom. And this SLUTL web intercom actually connects to your Moodle, to a Moodle chat room. So I'm just going to flip over to my, um, to the website. English. Okay, so as I mentioned before, um, can you guys just take a look at my Adobe Connect, please? As I mentioned before, um, this whole entire classroom is connected to a Moodle website. So this is what the Moodle website looks like. So if I click on Demo Course, I'm just going to log in quickly. I want to show you the uh, Moodle chat room. So here I'm inside the Demo Course. And you can see that there's a number of different activities. I've got a controller activity. And this is essential. You need this. Otherwise, you can't connect your classroom to Second Life. So never delete that. You've got the distributor, it's a little prim drop. And then here's a chat room. So here's the presentation area chat room. So if I click on that, I'm just going to zoom it in so you can see it better. One second. area chat room. So if I click on that, it, this is a standard Moodle chat, and it says click to enter chat now. Well, first in Second Life, what I'm going to do is, since I'm the owner, I'm going to click on this web intercom, and I'm going to turn it on inside Second Life. And when I do that, I get a little menu that says, would you like to turn it on, yes or no? I'm going to press yes. And now, um, you guys can click on this, on the web intercom, and select your avatar to be recorded. And this will record your chat. So if you click on it, you should get a menu, and you can choose, there you go, you can choose one. Oh, did I turn it off? Oh, that's strange. It turned off. Let me turn it on again. Maybe you can click it and um, select yourself to be recorded again. OK, so it looks like it's recording Salazar and Stephen Ray. Now, I'm going to flip back to the Moodle chat room. And what this what this does this this web intercom is it will bridge your chat from Second Life to your Moodle website and store all the chat. So I'm going to say hi from the web and press send and this should come into Second Life. Two seconds for it to relay. Okay, so you can all see in, in Second Life, it says, hi from the web. Now, if I type, hi from Second Life, that message, okay, that message came into the chat room. Can you guys see that on, oops, can you guys see that on Adobe Connect? Okay, so this is a really great tool because what you can do is, if, if you have a, if you have a, if you have a uh, presentation in Second Life or a class discussion, if you choose to turn your web intercom on, then you can keep an archive of the entire chat. Um, and for those students that cannot come into Second Life but still want to participate in the Second Life discussion, they can simply log in via Moodle and participate through the web. So this is useful because sometimes when we have meetings, when we have had meetings in the past, um, one of the people, they just can't enter Second Life for technical problems. But they could simply just load up their Moodle and still participate through chat. Now, one activity that you might want to use for this, this web intercom for is, if you're teaching languages, uh, yeah, so um, uh, Stevie Ray says, another problem is it's very difficult to enter the, for the whole class to enter the classroom. That's right. Yes, uh, usually only until 10, 12 students in a classroom can enter and move uh, freely on Second Life because uh, it's not impossible 
it's not possible to for 20 person in a, to connect uh, uh, with the same uh, connection uh, internet connection in a, in a school oh i see just not enough bandwidth excuse me uh, is it because of the bandwidth ah, ah yes yes it's because of the bandwidth uh, Usually, ten students is the maximum for a classroom in our experience. Because it's uh, in Italy, it's uh, a seven megabyte uh, connection, internet broadband connection, and seven megabytes in a school become become a very very small a, a very narrow band connection okay well then this could be um, you know there's a couple of ways you can get around that if you I guess you either you pair your students up in teams or you could use this uh, for the chat room you could use Moodle for the for the main chat discussion and um, the students that can enter could enter and participate in Second Life and the others could participate via Moodle. So the other thing I want to show you is um, uh, we also, in this presentation scene, we also have the Moodle presenter, the Moodle presenter. Um, this could be resized if you want it to be a little bit bigger. And this is connected to um, different slides um, in the Moodle course. So if, if you press the next button, this will go grab uh, a slide which you've uploaded to Moodle. Now I'm just going to switch to Moodle so you can see what I'm, what I'm talking about. On my Moodle course, if we go back to the demo course and you click on um, presentation, this is another Sloodle activity. You'll see that you'll see that um, there are uh, a number of buttons, and if you press the next button, it will take you through the different slides. And these are just um, uploaded JPEGs that we've uploaded. But the cool thing is, is um, what the presenter what the presenter does is it, it will it will broadcast those JPEGs into Second Life. And if you want to add, if you want to edit this presentation on Moodle, you just press the edit tab, and here you can um, upload upload more slides, or move slides around, or delete slides. Um, you can also import a PDF using the import slides. You, we have a multiple uploader. You can go, you can choose to select files from your hard drive, and then um, upload them to Moodle. And once they're once they're uploaded, you can then use this presenter in Second Life to give your presentation. This presenter also uses shared media. You can display web pages on this screen, um, JPEGs, or even videos. Well, it looks like uh, this classroom's um, hitting that waterfall, so I'm just going to move the classroom back a little bit. There we go. Now over here we've got a Twitter wall and this is also shared media surface and this is simply the Twitter widget which we brought into Second Life and it is connected to chat as well so if I type in slash 10 um, Second Life the Twitter wall oh it already is Second Life okay I'll do something else I'll go slash 10 earthquake um, the Twitter wall will do an automatic search for um, tweets with the word earthquake in them and show them um, um, and then every time a new tweet comes in it will it will display up there so we put this this uh, feature in, in on the presentation screen because sometimes when you are give, you're at a conference um, the conference leader will say if you're going to tweet you know use a particular hashtag so if you're having a conference the hashtag might be 
conference SL. So if I set my Twitter wall to that hashtag, uh, conference SL, then anytime somebody tweeted with that hashtag, it would show up on this Twitter wall. Okay, so this is a presentation area, and we hope that you can use this to, for your students to give presentations in Second Life, or if you want to give a presentation, we have a bunch of different seats, a bunch of seats there for your students to sit down on. Um, there's also something at the back of the room here, which I haven't shown you, and this is the Prim Drop. This is also a Sloodle tool, and it's actually a sort of a Dropbox. So this is connected to a another uh, Sloodle activity. If you look at my Adobe Connect, I'll just switch over and show you which activity it's connected to. It's connected to this Sloodle Prim Drop assignment. And it says that I have not submitted anything yet. So if I wanted to submit an assignment, what I'd have to do is I could build a box. Um, maybe that assignment, that assignment could be anything. It could be, you could tell your students to create a bunch of note cards and send you a note card, or you could tell your students to, you know, build you something and submit that. So let's say that you gave them a building assignment and they were to build you a desk. Let me just do that quickly here. So let's say a student built this beautiful desk for you. Um, and they wanted to submit it. Well, all they'd have to do is um, set the privilege, the permissions to full permissions. It'll only work if it's full permissions. They'd have to rename it to my assignment, whatever they want, a submission, fire centaur. Take it into their inventory. Then click on the drop box. And when they do that, they'll get a menu that says submit. So I'll press 2 and now the Dropbox will wait for me to drop something into it. So I go to my inventory, I find that object that I took and I hold down the control key and I when I move, when I hold down the control key and move it over you'll see that it highlights to, to red not yellow. So if I do that and let go There we go, it's checking item. And it says that my assignment submission for Fire Centaur appears to be okay. So if I flip back to Moodle, <laughs> Moodle now, and refresh the screen. Let's see here. It says two submitted assignments. So Fire Centaur made a submission on Wednesday 29th. Now, as a teacher, you can come in and you can assign you can assign a grade for that. So, if we click on this assignment here, file it says file three. Let's click on that. It'll tell you the object name that was submitted, my assignment submission, Fire Centaur, and it'll give you a slurl. So, the teacher can go to that slurl by pasting it into the address bar here, and they'll automatically teleport to where the prim, prim drop is. And then they can click on here and take all objects, all the students' objects. That will give them a folder in their inventory with all these submitted assignments. They can look at them and then come back to Moodle and assign a grade. So the workflow would be the teacher would come in here and say, okay, they would they would look at the assignment in Second Life and oh that's a very nice desk, and then give assign a grade. So I'm going to assign 100%, press Save Changes, and now I've just graded that student's Second Life assignment. So it's a little bit of a complicated workflow. Um, students need to know that all the students need to know is whatever they submit has to be full of permissions. And then what you need to know as a teacher is how to retrieve the objects from the prim drop and then how to grade them. What the prim drop allows you to do is assign a grade to a virtual object. Any questions on that? That was a little bit complicated, I know.
Shall I continue? Okay, great. Okay, so just in quick review, this was our presentation area. There's the web intercom, the presenter, and the prim drop, and the Twitter wall. Let's move up to our meeting space. Now, our meeting space isn't much different from the presentation area, except we've got the chairs configured in a circle instead. Um, and this is more for a group discussion. There's actually supposed to be, in the corner over there, a distributor. And I see that it's not. So I'm going to go back to my reser and find out why it didn't res. One moment. Vending machine. OK, I'm going to de-res. I'm going to de-res all these things, so if you're sitting down, you might get booted off your seat. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, now I'm going to res them all again. I think my vending machine is stuck over here for some reason. So I'm just going to move it back over, save the position. Okay, this vending machine is supposed to be part of the scene. So it looks like I didn't save the position or it got lost when, in our, uh, when I was creating this scene. One moment. Okay, I've just placed the, uh, the vending machine where it's supposed to be. I'll just go back and freeze that location. <coughs> Oh, I forgot to tell you, another really cool thing about this um, reser is the blue button will actually open this reser screen in your browser so you don't have to always come back to uh, this reser screen. So if you're a power user and have a second monitor, this blue button up here will be very useful for you. Okay, I've just... Yeah, that's right, and, you, and Salazar, Salazar says, and you don't need Viewer 2 to control it. So I'm just going to press the freeze. Okay, good. Now we can continue. So this vending machine, um, it's just a means to distribute items to your students. You can drag and drop uh, things into the contents of this vending machine simply by control, dragging them from your inventory into this vending machine, or right-clicking the vending machine, choosing Edit, and going to Content, and then dragging stuff inside of it. Um, I'm just going to... I'm going to put a prize inside of it right now. Just a minute. Um, Mr. Okay, I'm going to put a, a little pet inside of this vending machine for my students. In my uh, inventory, I've got this pet I made for called Mr. Hat. Let's see if he's still there. Oh, I have 65,000. Oh, there it is. Prize, Mr. Hat. Okay, I'm going to drag this, this this prize in this vending machine. Okay, so now, since I've got an object inside this vending machine, you can just simply click on it, and it will give you a list of what's inside, and you can choose to retrieve that, and then it will give it to you in your inventory. So, as a teacher, you can put a bunch of different virtual items in here. Like, for example, maybe you've got a bunch of different characters, that uh, character costumes for role plays that you want your, your students to have. You could drag them all in there and then tell your students to pick up their assignment or whatever inside of the vending machine. So it sounds maybe too very basic, <laughs> but it's not, and I'll tell you why. Um, this vending machine is also connected to the... A, a Moodle activity, and this is called uh, the Sloodle Distributor. And this Sloodle Distributor, let me see here. Oh, I forgot to tell you. Once you um, once you drop something in here, you have to uh, choose the command menu and choose reconnect, and that will upload that to Moodle. Okay. 
Uh, now, what I was saying was, when you look at uh, the, the distributor activity on Sloodle, it will list all the items inside of the distributor in a drop-down box. And that way, I can choose which student I want to give the hat to without coming into Second Life. So let's see if Salazar is in here. Salazar. I've got many students already in this course. Salazar, okay. So I'm going to select the user Salazar on my Moodle screen. I'm going to choose what I want to give them, Mr. Hat, and I'm going to press send to avatar. And then a message from your Moodle website should go to the distributor and Salazar should get offered the hat. Did you get did you get a offer yet? Okay, good. So let me see if G Geo Colo is is in there as, as my student because if you clicked on the web intercom, you should have automatically been registered as a student. Yes, you are. Okay, good. So now I'm going to send it to Geo Colo. I'll also send one to Maria. Maria or Marios? Oh no, it's Maria. Oh, I wonder if Maria clicked on the web intercom because I don't see her as a student listed. So if you didn't do that, then you weren't automatically entered into my class. Unless I just can't see you. I don't see your username there. Maria, no, I don't see you. Maria, can you please um, click on the web intercom in the meeting? Or oh, actually, you can click on it in this scene. You can see the web intercom in the middle of the floor there. If you click on that and choose number one, then you should automatically be registered as a student in the course. Oh, maybe I need to turn it on. Let me try it one more time. Sorry, Maria. Try that one more time. Okay, so Maria did it now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to refresh my Moodle screen and I'm going to see if Maria is listed. She should be listed as a student now because by her adding herself to the web intercom, Sloodle should have automatically added her to her, my course. So let's see if she's there. Still not seeing you. I'll just refresh the screen one more time. Uh, it doesn't look like it doesn't look like my Sludo likes you. <laughs> I don't see you here in this in the uh, screen. I see Stevie Ray. I see everybody else except for Mayra Lisa. Maybe it's under L for Lisa. Um, I'm going to go into my users and see if you're there. So let's go back to my demo course. And click on avatars.
Okay, I'm sorry, Mara. I can't find you. I'm gonna have to do a, a search um, in Moodle. But the the what you're supposed to I'm not actually sure unless you've signed up as a different user. Um, avatar search. I keep on getting an error too. Okay, well we might have an error here. There might be an error with our code. Um, I will look into that. Okay, so basically, I'll just, in summary, what the, what the distributor allows you to do is it allows you to send items to your students using a web interface, if you so choose. Other students can also come to the distributor on, on your Moodle website, click on it, and have items sent to them. Well, if they don't want to go searching for your vending machine, but they want to get their items, this is a one-stop shop for them to come and get items that you want to give to them. Mabra. I don't think I saw Mabra registered here either. Oh, Mabra just arrived. Hello, Mabra. Okay, so let's uh, move on to the next and last floor. So up here, this is a fun one. You're lucky, Stephen Ray. I just closed the door in time. <laughs> this is um, this is a fun activity. This is um, this little quiz chair. You can sit on this little quiz chair, and it'll start asking you questions. The cool thing about this quiz chair, it also has a scoreboard attached to it, and the scoreboard is actually fairly powerful. It's a shared media scoreboard. And um, it allows you to, um, it will give you points um, if you get questions correct or, uh, and subtract points if you get questions incorrect. Now, the cool thing about this is you'll notice that if you have a viewer too, that there's quite a few students already listed on here and some have like 10,000 points already. So what happens if you want to give a competition just to... Um, the students that are present. Well, you can do that by using the uh, by wearing the Avatar Classroom Scoreboard Administration HUD, and you can get the the HUD by clicking on Get HUD, and you can see in my Adobe Connect that I'm wearing it. Now, once you're wearing it, you press this Connect HUD button, and that will be send a message to my to my Administration HUD to synchronize it to this scoreboard that I just clicked connect HUD on. And you'll see that um, now I have a little bit of a different view. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press X on all of these people who I don't want to be on the scoreboard. So I might have to do quite a bit of that. And then I'll just what I'll do is I'll just add you guys to the scoreboard. And that way we can have our own private competition. You can also press new round. New round will zero everybody's points.
Now the fun thing is, if you get the, the questions incorrectly, what you'll do is you'll fall into the shark pool. Fortunate enough to fall into the shark tank, the sharks will attack you. Looks like our sharks are hungry today. Oh, there they are. They're starting to attack now. Okay. Looks like you're riding the shark. <laughs> Okay, so, so this is a shark pool and we have this shark pool um, below. If you want to eject your students from the shark pool, you can just click on the doors above and that will, uh, that'll, that'll, uh, I just deleted the ejection pool, but um, that will eject everybody from the tank. I'm going to de-res the um, shark pool because I, I deleted the uh, thing that ejects us all out of it. And then I'll re-res it. Okay, so that's pretty much the end of my demo. Um, what I'll do is I'll, I'll open it up for uh, questions now. Oh, that's the other thing I didn't tell you, I, I forgot to tell you actually. So um, I'm just going to switch to the Avatar Classroom website. Um, if you look at my Adobe Connect, um, I'm just going to go to avatarclassroom.com.
This is avatarclassroom.com. And um, if you want to get your own classroom uh, with your own Moodle website that looks like this, you could just come to this website. And we've actually got quite a bit of documentation. If you go to our documentation area right here, you can see there'll be documentation on the quiz chair, on the choice, the Dropbox, the presenter, the reser, distributor, web intercom, glossary, and also you can click on list all tools. And that will give you uh, quite a bit of documentation, actually. Um, it'll tell you, give you an overview of it, how to take a quiz, how to answer a question, how to add a quiz chair to your scene, how to configure it. Um, there's quite a bit of documentation there. And we've done this for the choice tool as well. Um, the Dropbox, there's documentation on the Dropbox, exactly where to click and how to, how to give assign assignments. Um, there's documentation on the presenter. There's also documentation on the reser. There's quite a bit here. On the distributor, on the web intercom, and the frequently asked questions. So um, if you want to sign up and get your own avatar classroom, you can just click on this 30-day free trial. And uh, what it'll do is it'll take you through the uh, setup steps. You can just type it. Um, the first page will ask you what the subdomain you want. So you can choose any subdomain you want with no spaces or underscores for avatar classroom. So you could type in um, new classroom, for example, or Italy, for example, Italy, Italy SL. Press add to cart. And then if you click on check out, it'll ask you to uh, go to pay, um, it'll ask you to review your order. When you review your order, it'll automatically take you to um, review order. Submit your order and then it will, it will take you, I believe, to PayPal. Where you log in, it'll set up a, a, night, uh, a, a subscription with us that won't start charging until one month later. And once you've done that, um, you'll get your classroom set up on Moodle. And then you can get your, uh, once you do that, then it'll give you the location of where you can get the Avatar Classroom inside Second Life. And then you're ready to go. So literally, you can have your whole setup up within um, probably about 10 minutes. I have a question, Fire. Um, yeah. Uh, the first is, uh, uh, which exactly, since I'm seeing that there, there is about $20 to pay monthly, no? uh, for what these dollars are, that is, are for the, um, for the hosting, web hosting, or for some uh, um, things that are more than Sludel? My question is, what's the difference from Sludel and Avatar Classroom in terms of uh, licenses and uh, free permissions, uh, what we can use uh, if it is, can be set on, uh, um, I don't know if you understand. Yeah, no, I understand. Uh, so the difference uh, between the Avatar Classroom and Sludel is, it actually has all of the Sludel tools but what you get is, you get some bonus tools in there. For example, Floodle doesn't have the shark pool. Um, and
No. Can you hear me? Qualcuno mi sente? I cannot hear. Io sento te, sì, non sento fare. Eh, nemmeno io. Comunque, comunque non so se avete capito cosa gli ho chiesto gli ho chiesto qual è la differenza fra Avatar Classroom e Sludel visto che Sludel è gratuito e invece Avatar Classroom eh, nella versione che stanno dando loro da, costa 20 dollari al mese dice che comunque chiarirà con Edmund che è l'altra persona che ha fatto il software And the sec dunque lui aspetta sì, leggo in voce allora lui dice che praticamente il you mean? Oh. Oh. I'm, I'm trying to translate what you wrote Uh, in Italian It is, uh, allora uh, l'avatar la, classroom vi dà una soluzione chiave in mano in modo tale che voi non dobbiate installare il Moodle o Sludel è configurato automaticamente e si connette alla classe mm? automaticamente uh, ah sì, poi c'è la domanda di Stevie Rowe poi dice che ci sono degli strumenti in più rispetto a Sludel che sono la piscina degli squali il teleporter e la uh, il, come si dice, il forziere del tesoro e la porta magica e le monete magiche che servono per fare un po' di role play e quelle però dice che sono open source e, e quindi um, I should uh, I should yes, correct myself Salazar yes. I believe all of those I'm sorry it's been a while since I, we Edwin and I talked about this but I'm pretty sure everything that we've made is open source so If you have Sludel uh, installed, um, I think you get those teleporters. So the advantage of the Avatar Classroom is you may get uh, some special tools um, sooner than they're released to Sludel. Ah, ok, lui sta dicendo che in realtà tutto quello che hanno fatto è open source, 
e quindi è disponibile a tutti quelli che ne hanno bisogno, però il vantaggio è che eh, comprando, eh, cioè avendo la sottoscrizione a Avatar Classroom si ha diciamo, un supporto migliore, si possono avere questi prodotti prima che siano resi pubblici. I've said that uh, it's just a question of having a better support uh, and uh, having them before they are released publicly, is that you are saying. But anybody Yeah, so you, you'll get you'll get access to more experimental things quicker. But um the uh the main advantage is that uh you don't have to be bothered with uh setting up Moodle and Sludo yourself. Sì, dice che la cosa migliore è fondamentalmente il fatto che eh, non ci sono problemi a dover installare Moodle o Sludl da noi perché questo normalmente è una cosa abbastanza complicata. Uh, ok, and, and then Fire, the second question that already Steve Ray has asked is uh, relationship with OpenSim, that is uh, what uh, is more important for them. They wanted to, to test this on OpenSim. Right, okay, well, um, Edmund and I are about 70% complete uh, of importing it into OpenSim. So we already have the classroom in OpenSim, but um, we haven't got all the tools uh, inside yet. So tomorrow we're going to be working together on it, um, so hopefully we'll bring it up to about 90%, but uh, we still have some more work to do. Yes, because uh, we, we are planning to use it on our educational grid in OpenSIM, Edmondo, that I already told you. And uh, this is very important for us, because uh, we, we, will, we will use it on, uh, with students, and uh, over, uh, under 18 students, so Second Life is not accessible for us. Right. Um, what is the date that you're going to start using it with your students? We're, we're still using with our students. Uh, some of the teachers uh, that are here, here uh, still, uh, uh, they are still using uh, OpenSIM uh, Edmondo Educational Grid with their students. Uh, okay. Yes, already, not still. Okay, well, we'll get that um, released as soon as possible, and then as soon as it's released, um, we could um, we can simply uh, give you the IAR file, so you can copy it into your servers. Okay, for it, 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 it would be great for us to test inside the Mondo. Uh, yes, we'd love that. That would be awesome. Yes. Okay, uh, well, I, I have no other questions, so if someone has other questions, someone of the teachers. Um, which controllers need to install in Moodle to play Little Tool? Well, um, if if you install the Sludl2 module, um, then uh, once the Sludl2 module has been installed into your Moodle, then when you go to add an activity, um, you just have to choose the controller. And then that's all you have to do, and then you can connect your Rezzer to your Moodle site. Oh, I see. So you tried to connect, but uh, it didn't work?
Oh, yes. yes. Yeah. yeah, so you have to make sure that you're using a browser that uses shared media. Right now, I use, um, I actually use the Linden browser. Um, and uh, if you have, uh, it's very easy to use the, the Second Life browser. Um, I'll, give, I'll tell you a quick trick what you need to do to connect it to your open sim. Um, if you create an icon on your, a duplicate shortcut on your desktop um, on a Windows machine, um, and then uh, go to the properties, right click that icon and choose properties. Um, then you just have to edit the target. And um, if you type in the target to be um, this, for example, then uh, it will load up your open sim instead of Second Life. So that's, that's one of my grids right there. Um, it's just a private grid. We use it for development. But um, if you were to type in that, for example, um, into your, if you were to right click the icon, your Windows icon for your Second Life and edit the target and change it to that, then you can use the Second Life Viewer 2 to, lo to log into your open sim. Um, excuse me if I, I'm sorry, but I have, I have to leave in a few mi uh, five minutes because I have uh, another event and, and uh, I would like to thank you for this demo and um, I would like to contact you in advance uh, for uh, talking about uh, our educational grid and maybe uh, if you want uh, uh, some support you could uh, uh, give us in uh, setting up uh, our third classroom in uh, in our educational scene. Well, Edmund and I would. De um, Ed I'm sorry, by the way, that Edmund couldn't be here tonight. He wanted to come, but he also had another meeting. But uh, um, we are very excited and happy that you guys are are interested in in the avatar classroom, and we'll certainly do whatever we can to help you get it set up. I mean. If you want, even if you want to use your own uh, Moodles instead of um, the Avatar Classroom, um, that's totally up to you. It's um, on what you want, um, but we can, we'll help you regardless to to get things working. Okay, uh, so I will contact you, and uh, so very soon, and so uh, and now I will thank you for this uh, moment. It's very, it's been very useful and very clear. So thank you very much. Yes, thanks, thanks, Stevie Ray. It's it's Andreas, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay, nice to see you. So um, also goodbye to you then. Goodbye. Goodbye. Th thanks again. And thanks. See you soon. Thank you, Salazar. Very nice to meet all you guys. Bene. È stato abbastanza interessante. Non so se Maria adesso riesce a sentire o a parlare. Sentiamo stasera? Ci vediamo stasera? Stasera cos'è? Io ho perso la cognizione del tempo, mercoledì. Siamo con Sala. Ciao Andrea. E allora, consueto appuntamento, sì, magari poi approfondiamo, perché io stamattina avevo provato a, a mettere il 2 e mi dava quell'errore, non mi trova la, la cartella shared, la che ho scritto lì. È un problema di linguaggio, almeno lui ha fatto capire, mi sembra, vero? Sala. Magari lui la va a cercare. Comunque, poi ne parliamo stasera. Ciao Andrea. Ciao Sala. Ciao Marco. Ok, ciao a tutti. Sì, dimmi. 
Ciao Maurizio, ciao Maria. Ringraziamo anche Maggio Frutte che ha fatto il video, purtroppo per gli italiani non sarà molto fruibile, perché sono parti essenziali in inglese, <ride> Infatti. Ma magari se per qualcuno Comunque, può aiutare a fare i sottotitoli. Comunque, si vedeva abbastanza bene, bene, complimenti anche a Magic. E poi ecco queste altre cose qua, comunque cerchiamo anche di farle in SL, lì in Pyramid, nella, nella, nella SIM di Solaris, dove adesso stiamo, stiamo facendo questi esperimenti, metteremo anche delle classi lì, insomma, per studiare queste cose, perché c'è un sacco di gente che è interessata a questo genere di argomenti. Quindi, Ma conviene acquistare da lui, perché in fondo in fondo si potrebbe anche fare autonomamente. Sì, ma infatti, ma ne parliamo poi meglio stasera, il concetto è che loro comunque sono, stanno valutando se in qualche misura da Ocelo, se non proprio gratuitamente, ma scontato. Il prodotto è tutto open source, ma c'è comunque un sacco di tempo da perdersi e quindi per certi versi è anche giusto che chi perde molto tempo per fare dei prodotti... Di certo, no, no, non dico che le loro esigenze una, fossero esose, anzi, certo. No, ma poi mi sembra che abbiano già ridotto il prezzo, che all'inizio era 29 dollari, adesso hanno messo 19. <ride> Quindi, se poi dicono che comunque tutto ciò che hanno fatto è sempre open source, stanno comunque facendo un'operazione eh, incredibile, perché comunque è open source la cosa. Quindi tu paghi in realtà solo la, la comodità di non muovere un dito. Certo, non hai problemi da risolvere e così via dicendo. Va bene, dai, siccome noi no, siamo no, degli sperimentatori, sperimentatori ormai, ormai ci conosci <ride> ci piace metterci le mani da noi stessi questo è il problema forse d'accordo ragazzi Vabbè. vi saluto tutti ne parliamo ci vediamo stasera, stasera. Ciao. Guys, Era, I forgot to show you uh, some of the role playing tools ha dimenticato di mostrarci alcune delle regole dei, dei, dei ruoli, dei tools per giocare una quick demo, sì dai yes, yes a quick demo ok, I'll show you um, let's see here I'm going to show you um, this uh, teleporter uh, actually I'm going to show you the, um, the magic chest which is kind of cool one moment I don't know if you remember, but I buy the uh, one your tools here, TV. The TV? TV, yes. Oh, cool. Uh, at the first time of Second Life, we were with uh, multimedia. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>